Diverticulosis is a condition of involving the colon wall. One must think about the colon, part of our anatomy, the large intestines, as being about five and a half feet long. This is what carries the waste all the way out to the anus. I liken the colon very much like a caterpillar because as a caterpillar inches along, so is the colon contracting with three longitudinal muscles that segment the bowel and propel the stool. It is between these segments that a lot of times outpouchings occur because the high pressure generated within the colon to propel the stool. The outpouchings are diverticulosis. By the age of 50, uh, by the age of 60, 50% 50 of our American population has diverticulosis. Again, because our diet is low in fiber. Virtually by age 80, all of the population have a degree of diverticulosis. Only 20% of the patients with diverticulosis develop symptoms, and 10 to 15% will develop diverticulitis. Diverticulitis, or itis being inflammation, is that condition. Most of the time, 75% of the time, diverticulitis can be managed with medical therapy antibiotics. Only 25% of the time is diverticulitis complicated. The uh, complications of it are pain that is not responding to oral antibiotics. If that's the case, we often will then send the patient to get a CAT scan or some type of imaging technique to be certain that the diverticulitis is still confined to the wall of the bowel. At times, there is a localized perforation, a collection of pus or infection attached to the wall of the bowel or outside. If it's early and that area is not responsive to antibiotics, whether IV or oral, then we use the interventional radiologist to percutaneously with CAT scan, direct a drainage of that abscess, thus avoiding surgery and letting everything cool down. If, however, the complications of diverticulitis extend, it could develop either a perforation with a large phlegmon or a collection around the uh, bowel that is not responding to antibiotics, or perhaps over time a fistula, a communication occurs between a segment of the bowel with the diverticulitis and an adjacent organ. That could be a communication to the bladder, which is called a colovesical fistula, a communication to the vagina, a colovaginal fistula, a communication to small bowel, or a coloenteric fistula, or communication even to ureters, the conduits between the kidney and the bladder called a colourotaric fistula, and these need surgical intervention. The differential diagnosis of diverticulitis has to be taken into consideration location. The vast majority of patients who present with pain is in the left lower quadrant, where the most predominant number of diverticuli can occur. But depending on the anatomy of the patient, how big they are, if it's a female that's small, we have to take in consideration adjacent other types of organs. Most commonly, the differential diagnosis would include appendicitis, usually pain on the right side. Patients do not always know that they have a condition called inflammatory bowel disease. Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, where inflammation can affect either large or small bowel in the case of Crohn's disease, or the large bowel in the case of ulcerative colitis. These inflammatory responses can often cause obstruction, bleeding, pain, infection. The other consideration would be what's called ischemic colitis. That's where the uh, blood supply going to the colon is occluded. Often in an elderly patient that may have diverticular disease, 
those patients have atherosclerotic vessel disease where plaques build up and blood supply is altered. If the bowel then becomes without blood, that's called ischemic colitis and could cause either a rupture of the bowel, a chronic stricturing of the bowel, or inflammation. Additionally, cancer. Cancer can present as an obstruction, as can diverticulitis. Usually the obstruction is not acute nor painful as it is in diverticulitis, but that is part of our differential diagnosis. Pelvic inflammatory disease in females, where one gets an infection of the uterus, the vagina, or the fallopian tubes, can also present as painful inflammation. And finally, a foreign body perforation. Somebody that has swallowed a chicken bone, a fish bone, as it tracks all the way through, sometimes it makes it to the colon, where it lodges in the colon wall, becomes inflamed, and can create a localized perforation. The vast majority of patients who present with diverticulitis um, have what's called uncomplicated diverticulitis, about 75% of the patients. And those patients respond quite well to antibiotics. Uh, oftentimes that is oral antibiotics initially. If they are not responding and have elevated white count, have continued pain, we do get a CAT scan to make sure that they don't have a true abscess and the patients often end up in the hospital where they get intravenous antibiotics. Again, the majority of those patients respond to that and are able to go home. If they've gone home, then we institute dietary measures and lifestyle changes to help them that way and they could avoid surgery. Only about 25% of the patients have complicated diverticulitis, including abscess, perforation, or obstruction. Those patients do indeed need to have surgery, often urgent surgery, uh, if they haven't responded to interventional means of trying to treat an abscess or to relieve an obstruction due to inflammation.